So we saw that light is made of photons. Photons is a quantum of light, uh, um, or the particle of light. They propagate according to the laws of quantum mechanics, that is, to go from one event to another. They will explore all the paths, and in order to get the amplitude of probability to go from one event to another, I have to sum um, the, the phasor associated for each of the paths, and the phasor is, uh, as we saw, the exponential of i times the action of the path divided by h bar. What is special about the photon is that its energy is E equal h nu. And as this is the equivalent of the kinetic energy of the photon, uh, this is also equal to the Lagrangian. But the Lagrangian, as we define it usually, is a function of the position x and uh, the velocity x dot of the particle. We don't have any x or x dot in uh, uh, the expression of the energy, but nothing prevents in principle to have the frequency nu being a function of uh, these quantities x and x dot. But if we are looking at the case of a free photon, uh, that means there is uh, invariance under translation, and that means that the Lagrangian has to be uh, independent on x. The other thing we need um, to enforce is that the speed of light is a constant, and that, in fact, will be the uh, basis of relativity. So, therefore, there is absolutely uh, no way we can have the frequency which uh, depends on time. So, the action uh, is the time integral of the Lagrangian, but in for a photon, the l a free photon, the Lagrangian is a constant. Therefore, uh, the action is just uh, h nu times um, the time traveled by the photon. The way we define our amplitude of probability uh, phi from a to b um, was between two events, so it's for a fixed time t. But now let's look at a um, different problem where we have, say, two dimensions of space, x and y, and we have two points, p and q, and we are interested to um, look at the possible uh, trajectories, let's call them trajectories and not path, uh, for the photon to go from p to q. And instead of one photon, we imagine we have a continuous beam of photons going from p to q. So for instance, in p you have a um, um, a lamp shining, and in Q you have your eye uh, collecting the photons coming from the lamp. Quantum mechanics uh, tells us that the photons which arrive in Q um, followed different paths. And of course, each of these paths will have a different action because it will they will be uh, more or less uh, long, meaning that it will have taken more or less time for the photon to travel along this path. So, this means that in Q, um, the detection of the photon involves summing phasors in many possible directions. And as uh, in the case of classical mechanics, most of these paths are going to uh, cancel each other because the phasors are going to be in all directions. This is particularly true for visible light, because the visible light, the frequency, is about 10 to the power 14 uh, hertz. So, when we translate that into the phase uh, S divided by h bar, I let you do the calculation for a photon traveling around uh, 3 meters, that's uh, about a million uh, rotation of the phasors between, um, before it gets detected. So we already heard the story. Uh, only one path is going to contribute. And of course, this is the path which is uh, leaving the action stationary. And we also know that it usually corresponds to the path which, uh, um, for which the action is a minimum. So the minimum is, is a stationary point. So here, um, the expression for the action is h 
times nu times t, but we already saw that h and nu are constants, uh, but t depends on the path. So when do we have a minimum action? Is when uh, t, the time for the, the path, is a minimum. So we end up with the Fermat principle of least time, which states that light propagates along the path uh, of minimum time, of least time. Uh, so if in vacuum, for instance, that's often the, the path which is in straight line. And